Hi everyone, I'm Kirsty and welcome to today's episode of Alphabet Baghetti where I will be looking at the letter D and Dark Fever by Karen Marie Money. If you like dark and twisty, if you like fae books, if you're not afraid of more adult subjects and you like a bit of spice in your reading, this is definitely the one for you. I have loved the Fever series for a number of years now. I'm pretty sure it's been about six or seven years since I discovered them. And these are an adult, like very adult, I will give trigger warnings from the very start that there are scenes of sexual assault, rape, men being pretty much dicks. There's also grief trauma as well as the loss of a family member and there's quite a lot of violence in these books and later on in the series we also have some child abuse and they're not really books for the faint of heart to be honest as much as I love them and I recommend them I am also aware that there are some pretty heavy trigger warnings that come with it so I would also say to recommend uh, to have a look on booktriggerwarnings.com because there'll probably be a bit more of an extensive list than what I can remember off the top of my head. So, what is this series about, you ask? That's so dark and twisty. This is a Fae story, probably one of the first Fae books I ever read, and is very, very heavy on the dark and twisty side of the Fae. So we begin in Atlanta, Georgia, where Michaela Lane is a pretty vapid, self-obsessed, in her early 20s, sitting in the um, a deck chair at the edge of her parents' swimming pool, having a tan, thinking about painting her nails and her next shift at the bar, when the phone rings and her life falls apart. Her sister, Alina, who has been studying for her master's degree, in, no, her PhD in Dublin, has been murdered. And Mac doesn't feel that the Irish police are doing enough to try and find her sister's killer. So against her parents' wishes, she packs her bags, heads over to Ireland and starts demanding and asking questions. While there, she has a voicemail that was left by Alina, basically saying, you don't know who you are, you don't know what you even are and what you can do. Um, he tricked me, I thought I loved him and you need to find the um, She Shadow. I apologise to any Gaelic speakers. It's spelt the Sinsar du, du but it's uh, dub, but it's pronounced the She Shadow. She discovers, I can't remember how she finds out, but she then discovers that it's a book and she stumbles upon this shop after having a bit of a uneasy experience in the night where she asks the really lovely book teller Fiona about the book and this guy behind her responds why would you step into my shop of all places and inquire about that particular book so that's kind of like the meet cute where we are then introduced to Jericho Barons who is the main male in this book he's a bit of a dick he's very controlling very possessive and he does treat Mac pretty badly but as the book progresses we start to get the feeling that this book the sea she uh, the she shadow is pretty much the be all and end all for him if he does not find this book his life is essentially something really bad is going to happen max starts to realize that there's more to why he wants it and along the way she discovers that she is actually a part a member of the um she seers which again is written as like seed seers i used to read it as when i was younger until I checked out the pronunciation guide that is quite handily in the books to help you with the Irish pronunci pronunciations of things. And she finds out that she has these powers. She can sense the Fae and she has a special ability that is extraordinarily rare within her community. And she basically goes from just being a very vapid, she's not dumb, she just doesn't, she's very self-centered and doesn't really think about other people. Think like Hayley Dumphy from Modern Family. She's kind of like that to begin with, but she is also quite intelligent. She just cares more, a little bit more about her looks and maybe getting a boy and just thinking about where she's gonna get old and live with Alina. And uh, so she goes from being this kind of girl that loves pink and rainbows and sparkles 
and she goes through various changes and she calls it like Mac 1.0, 2.0 and then I think we're now on Mac 5.0 but this has got one of the best, I wouldn't say they're enemies to lovers because they're not like out and out enemies but they are very much, they are forced, her and Barons are forced together and she ends up having to live with him and it's kind of like neither of them really wants to be around the other one at first because they cannot stand each other then because they realize that they are they can't cope without the other one and then for other reasons again they are spoilery so i can't say but they do have a fantastic relationship all of the characters in this have got their own unique identity none of them seem to be a carbon copy of each other and I really, really love Danny, who is a 13 year old that comes into it, I think in either book two or, no, no, she is in the first book. And we get more of her and it's just brilliant because when Mac first arrives in Dublin, she's on her own. She then meets Barons and gets pulled into this really dark, awful world where the walls between Faye and the human world are crumbling. And the Unseely, who are like the evil, dark, grotesque fae who feed on humans and steal their souls and things like that, they're starting to break free. And it's kind of like they need to find the book to put the prison back together and try and stop complete fairy apocalypse from happening. And it has a really, really great backstory I like how Karen writes this as if like it's actually happening in the world because she's like, oh yeah, the next time you trip over fresh air, it wasn't fresh air, it was actually the Fae and things. And it kind of creeped, I remember reading it when I was about 17, 18 and it actually kind of creeped me out a little bit and it was like, okay, maybe I should sleep with a torch on. And yeah, in terms of like a personal growth as well, I think Mac is a character I went from absolutely hating her and even on this I'm on this is my third or fourth read through of the series and even now I do not I didn't like her at the beginning I understood her a bit more though actually now that I've matured a little bit and I'm a bit older I kind of get her reasoning for feeling the way she feels about things but she has one of the best character developments I've ever seen and her relationship with Barons I just feel is one of the best even though it's disturbed and messed up it's also one of the best relationships I've ever read. To this day, they are one of my absolute favourite couples, even though it really starts out abusive and coercive and especially on Baron's part, he is a complete and utter and you kind of want to smack him. But he also goes through a massive personality change and he improves on that and eventually they become this incredible unit and I love this series for that. But despite the fact that it is one of my favourite series that every couple of years I reread and love more and more each time I read it because there's different elements that maybe before last time I read I didn't either get or I just didn't really enjoy whereas this time I really enjoy it etc. It's just kind of one of those that I don't stop and think about it a lot so I need to kind of try and remember it a bit more often when I talk about my favourite series. Let me know in the comments if you have read this and what you thought about it or as always please keep it spoiler free for those that haven't had a chance to pick up the series yet and also let me know if you have watched this video, haven't read it but now are considering picking it up because it's always cool to know if someone has been swayed by my persuasion because let's face it my powers of persuasion are okay I guess <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna head off and I will see you on the next alphabeti baghetti I hope you're good I hope you're staying safe and until next time bye